this is Ghana tonight here on your election command center coming up next some sitting members of parliament risk losing their seats before the end of their turn should the NDC carry through their intention to have the speaker make a determination on the status of those MPs who have filed to contest as independent candidates in the December polls we have in fact, about three of them who, who have decided that they want to go the route as an independent candidate, even though they are seven as incumbent members of parliament in this eighth parliament. And there is the independent candidate for the Fomina constituency, the second deputy speaker of parliament, who is now going to contest as the NPP candidate. That, that presents a certain situation which the former minority leader, Harna Idrisu, is seeking to test the law on this matter making reference to precedents and what's happened before. But this is your election command center. A former minority leader, Harun Idrisu, has said that the NDC caucus of parliament will have the speaker of parliament make a determination on whether sitting members of parliament who have filed to contest the upcoming elections as independent candidates should continue to stay in the house or vacate their seats as MPs. Now, in the Tamil South Members of Parliament's view, such MPs must vacate their seats. And this is why it makes the point. Take a look. The Parliament of Ghana will reconvene. And when it reconvenes, I am very certain that Parliament and Ghana will go through a major constitutional test and that constitutional test is that the ADC minority must become the majority for Wednesday next week. And I assume, and this must happen if there is constitutional and legal proprietary in Ghana. Because any nuanced interpretation of Article 97 provides that if a member of parliament on a political party ticket like MPP defects and fails to be independent, that MP ceases to be a member of parliament. And if an independent member of parliament, by virtue of the provision of Article 97, sub clause G, an independent joins a political party, that independent loses constitutional recognition and does not belong to parliament. And even if an NDC candidate, MP, defects to become an independent, he ceases to be a member of parliament. Therefore, we will invoke the speaker's proper and true interpretation of Article 97. Well, that's Harun Idrisu there. He makes a point of making reference to Article 97 1G uh, of the 1992 Constitution, and we're going to show you that as we go on here on Ghana tonight to put the issues in context. And there's a reason why. And he makes the reference to the precedence that was set uh, by Speaker Michael Quay in the case of the former Member of Parliament who eventually was elected as Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament was a, an independent candidate, decided to contest that 2020 elections as an independent candidate after he fell out with the MPP. Now they've reconciled and he's going to contest that, this election on the ticket of the NPP. That's one of the four. The second person is Cynthia Morrison, Member of Parliament for the Aguna West constituency on the ticket of the MPP in this eighth parliament. She has decided to go as an independent candidate, even though over the weekend we saw an attempt to have her injuncted to not contest it in that election. She indicated that that is not going to stop him. Then also, we have the Suhum Member of Parliament, who is the, also the incumbent MP in this 8th Parliament, Obuafo Kojo Asante, who was decided to go as an independent candidate in the December 7 election. That's what you see on the screen right there. And then also, the MPP is not alone, even though they have, they have three of their people, that's persons, parliamentary candidates in there. Then you have the NDC, incumbent NDC MP for our Memphis Central constituency, Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, who has also decided that it wants to go independent. If you recall, the Memphis Central constituency NDC had to rerun that primary just a little over a month ago when um, the uh, wife of the musician, Keche, 
well, one of them um, also won that primary. And because of the issues that characterized that period, he decided that he was, he was going to go independent. If you recall, the, the, the courts were in the process of just hearing this case, but the party took a decision that if you, they want to go with the calendar of the court, they might just miss the period of filing. So they decided to then step in to, to call for a rerun, which um, he lost, and he's decided to go independent as well. So these are the four. And, and when you see how things are playing out, Harun Adrisu is very clear in his mind that um, this is um, going to be considered by the Speaker of Parliament. We'll see how things play out because Parliament is set to resume in the next 48 hours, all things being equal. And to, to get a bit more perspective into this matter, a private legal practitioner freshly called to the bar, uh, my, my producer here on Ghana tonight, Dennis Poberi Wadam Esquire. He's joining us. Lawyer, good evening. Alfred, mm. he's still the journalist, you know. Yeah, it's Dennis. you know, I'm just, I just said, I just have to say <laughs> anyway, that. Thank you so much for that. As always. Now, yes. what, what, what's, what's, what's with this issue, first of all? Well, so we are likely to run into yet another legal tussle with this particular matter because mm. already the conversation out there is divided. Whereas some or members of the NDC, especially the former minority leader, insist that, I mean, with what has happened so far mm. and with the provision that he's quoted, Article 97 of the Constitution, yes, 97, 1G, especially, he believes that for all those members of parliament, I mean, still members of parliament, who are either going to run as independent or mm -hmm. who are independent now and they are now going to run on the tickets of party should vacate their seats. He says that tomorrow when parliament reconvenes, he is going to, I mean, his side of the house would have the speaker make a determination on that. But let's look at what Article 97 says. I mean, 97, 1G especially. That a member of parliament shall vacate their seats in parliament if the member leaves the political party of which they were a member at the time of their election to parliament and joins another party or if they seek to remain in parliament as an independent member. Mm. So this is the article or the constitutional provision on which the member of parliament for Tamale South right. says that based on this, the four MPs that you put out on the screen, mm -hmm. three of whom are going to run as independent candidates, one, an independent candidate now going to run on the ticket of the MPP, must, by virtue of this, um, vacate their seats. I, I mean, I've heard some M M MPP MPs who think otherwise. However, there's precedent to this. And tell me about it. And then the argument made out there is that because a precedent has been set already, mm. it should not be a difficulty again. Right. And this has to do with the member of parliament for Formina, one of the persons that you just showed. Yeah. In his case, he was a member of the MPP. But for some reason, internal party wranglings, mm -hmm. he decided to run as an independent candidate. When he filed to run as an independent candidate, the MPP wrote a letter to parliament notifying the speaker that the seat be declared vacant. Yeah. Because with regards to their constitution, there's a provision that says that if a member of parliament or a member of the party decides to run as an independent candidate, mm. then that person automatically forfeits their membership of the party. So they make the argument that if he's not a member of our party, we have deemed him to automatically forfeit his membership. Right. Then parliament should go ahead and invoke Article 97, 1G. Then, this was the ruling of the then Speaker of Parliament, mm -hmm. right. Professor Errol Mike Okui. And this is just the part that speaks directly to what we are discussing now. Mm -hmm. He said, with all intents and purposes, he is no longer a member of the party. He has oh. pronounced himself publicly as an independent and has filed his papers to compete against the party in his official candidate as an independent candidate on 7th December 2020. He goes mm -hmm. on to say that, having forfeited the membership of the party on whose ticket he was elected to parliament, the operative language of the constitution is that he shall, which is mandatory, vacate his seats in parliament. And that was how come the MP for Formina lost mm -hmm. his seats at see. that material moment. I see. So this was at the, at the instance 
of, of the NPP. NPP, yes. The NPP wrote to Professor Michael Quay. Yes. That expel this former MP. Sure. Because he's decided to go independent. Yes. And Speaker Michael Quay. Acted and they, st they on started that. off by citing a provision in their own constitution, which is Article 93 of the NPP constitution, which right. talks about member, uh, forfeiting membership. Okay. And under this circumstance, it talks about somebody running as an independent candidate or somebody supporting an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate. You mm. recall, it's under the same circumstances that some members of the party now, the members like Hoops Nadoye, members like um, Bohame Asamoa, the same provision of the MPP constitution was used to, I mean, they forfeited their membership based on that. So that's largely the argument. But what we are now dealing with is now the question of whether an MP from the other side can, can notify parliament that this is what is happening. So let's declare the, 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 the seat of that MP vacant. The, and, and you, you want to hold it right there. And, and, and uh, uh, Dennis Poirberry, well done. And uh, at the answer to that question, we want to seek it right now. Right, yes. The Honorable Harun Idriso is joining us on the telephone right now. The Honorable Harun Idriso, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, and thank you very much for the opportunity and to your esteemed listeners. Fantastic. So, you, you heard Dennis, uh, the, the private legal practitioner here, put this matter in perspective, that in the instance where you make reference to this precedence set by Speaker Michael Quay's ruling uh, on this former member of parliament's case, it was at the instance of the MPP. The MPP wrote to Parliament, wrote to the Speaker to take that decision. Now, in your case, the MPP hasn't written to, to Parliament or, the, or, the, or the, uh, the Speaker to take this decision of expelling Cynthia Morrison and then also Obafo Kujasante. But you want to do that. How does that apply? The Constitution of Ghana, the 1992 Constitution, is the good norm of the Republic and the most important law that the President, Speaker, members of Parliament have all sworn to uphold and to uphold the laws of Ghana. Take a careful reading, reading, I don't say interpretation, of Article 971G of the Constitution. In constitutionalism and constitutional law, the provisions of Article 971G can best be described as the rule against defection. It is provided in the Constitution so that members who are elected to Parliament on the ticket of a political party or as independent candidate cannot just wake up and defect and cause as they wish. So it is to preserve the sanctity of the four-year mandate and the sanctity of the ticket in which you were elected to represent a particular group of people in parliament. Now, if you read Article 971G well, it contemplates, as we currently have, mm -hmm. three members of parliament from the New Patriotic Party, one member of parliament from the NDC. And it is that in one instance, you have an elected MPP member of parliament now choosing to file to be independent. What does that mean within the ambit of Article 971G? Presumptively, irrebatably, it means that that person has chosen that I no longer belong to the political party that brought me to parliament. Right. And therefore, cannot continue to hold himself as elected member of parliament. Now, take your time again. I'm just doing a nuanced interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. Read Article 97 well, the words. It says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat. Shall vacate his seat. Yes. It didn't say me. It didn't say me. Mm -hmm. Now, two, read the MPP letter well. What did they rely on? They relied on the same Article 97, even though for the purposes of their own party constitution. But they were also looking at the weight 
of Article 97. 97. So it does not lie in me saying NDP or NDC should write. I swore an oath to uphold the Constitution and to uphold the laws of Ghana. That is why, decisively, my argument is that any member of parliament who chooses to belong to a political party that he didn't belong to at the time of his election, by virtue of Article 971G, loses constitutional recognition. Uh, I, I just want to constitutional recognition. I, I, I see. But what do you say so to those lawyers? Independent now runs on a political party ticket or a political party elected MP now runs as independent or a political party run independent, they lose constitutional recognition on a true and proper interpretation of the ordinary meaning of 971G. We may invoke the Speaker of Parliament to interpret it if it is part of our standing orders or the best forum will be for somebody to challenge the Supreme Court. But that will be after they have been asked to vacate their seat. If in they fact, feel that they have not been dealt with in a manner which is just and lawful, then they can go to the Supreme Court. But this is a very, very simple, unambiguous provision of the Constitution that must be upheld and respected. Don't forget, political parties are also bound by the 1992 Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the NPP is bound by the provisions of the 1992 Constitution. Read Article 55 well, which is on political parties of Ghana. And therefore, it is not lie within me to tell MPP to write to Parliament, whether they write or not, has the conduct or action of an elected member of Parliament infringed on the 1992 Constitution. That now, is a matter. Uh, right, I but, I, I, but, but and I want to run this other legal proposition by you as well. Uh, others who make that strong contention that only the High Court, not the Speaker, or members of Parliament, or political parties can declare no, a parliamentary no. seat vacant. High Court on matters of fundamental human rights, yes. Exclusive interpretation of the Constitution lies in the bosom of the Supreme Court. But... When do you interpret an instrument when the words are upset, when the meaning of the words does not make sense to you as an ordinary person? So you read 97 one. what is your understanding of it? That if you belong to a party at the time of an election and you decide to join another political party or go independent, have you respected the tenants? that provision of the Constitution. It is, it is not for Haruna Ejizi to decide, but it is for Haruna Ejizi to raise it in pursuit of my respect for the Constitution of Ghana and for the laws of Ghana. But, but certainly you and make the, the point that... It, it, to take decision as appropriate. Right. If this decision is so taken, it will be subject to judicial review, possibly. Who wants judicial review? Why are you raising judicial review? The Constitution is clear that vacate your seat if you do A, B, C, D. Vacate your seat. Like in your instance, <laughs> your wife tells you that if you do A, B, C, D, you'll be divorced. Then you do A, B, C. You have to be divorced. Unless she decides to start crying that don't get divorced. And the cry will not help in this instance. That's just for the humor of it. That the point has been made. Are we in infringement? Are we supposed to uphold the constitution or to hold it in breach? Well, we'll see how the, the coming days will look like because you have indicated that when parliament resumes, you're going to do this. And um, it will be interesting to see because there's also an NDC one MP. Of, the, one the, of the, the persons I've been trying to reach to get an opinion myself is. Uh, uh, Professor Kumodo of the University of Ghana, and uh, I'll talk to other uh, 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 Professor Abuchi and others. But yes, and, I, and then Professor Kukwaza as well. Professor Kukwaza, yes. Yes, yes, Yanu and Co. But uh, let's see. In any case, the famous of the Constitution, why did they put this provision there? That's why I describe it as a rule against defection.
Yes. I've heard people argue that they are now going to be independent in future. Who cares about their future? So at that time, when they go and they are elected, they are not defected. Well, you see, that, that's, that's, a, that's another that legal position that's been espoused. That, yes, that the so decision... Does not arise at all. You see, so uh, I, I'm, I'm happy. I want to see how the people will respond to this. You see, you can't have a law which suits you when you want to use it, and then you abandon it when it does not suit you. That is a quagmire the MP2 will be subjected to. We'll see how things play out. And I appreciate rule of law is rule of law. There's no rule of the MPP. I thank you very much for your time joining us here on Ghana tonight. Harun Idriso is uh, the Member of Parliament for the Tamale South constituency and then also the former minority leader, right? And, and you, 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 make, you, you hear the points he makes about... Yeah. For him, it is clear. It's, it's clear. It's cast in stone. Yes, and yes, yes, if yes. you do A, B, C, D, you certainly must go. Yes. But of course, the speaker would have to make that determination and, mm. and as to whether he will go with his predecessor mm. or he will take a different route. I mean, that will be determined in the coming days. But of course, there are some who also make the case that the MPP must stick by its own principles. Because if John Boydou then had written this letter to categorically state that by the conduct of the Member of Parliament for Formula then had forfeited his, his, um, his seat or forfeited his membership of the party and to that extent, Parliament should declare his seat vacant. Uh, many are making the argument that they should still hold by that same principle mm -hmm. and perhaps write the same letter or a similar letter to Parliament to announce these independent candidates. But, I mean, we look forward to see what the coming days will present in this particular situation. Certainly so. And, and let's hear from Obafo Kujua Santu, the uh, Suhum Member of Parliament, incumbent MP. He's decided to go independent. He's one of four persons, four persons. on this. Let, let's hear him. They need the help. They petitioned me. And then they said that it doesn't matter what has happened. I should come and come and serve them. I should come and come and continue my work. So if you are talking about what, I mean, sort of the impetus, what, I mean, my voice, what, 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 what is pushing me to do what I'm doing or to do this declaration, then all that I will say is that it is wrong people. One person can say that you are going for independence. One person. Can one person go for independence? I'm asking you, can one person go for independence? One person cannot go for independence. Right? Yeah. It is the base. It is what? The base. I have only one vote. I have only one vote. So I cannot stand here. That's the incumbent Suhum member of parliament who lost at the primaries to uh, Frank Esiru Queen, Colin Protozwa, who is uh, the director of political affairs uh, at the office of the chief of staff at the presidency. Uh, going into this election as well. So we'll see, especially with the Agona West one where, involving uh, Cynthia Morrison and comment MP and this court case and how things are playing out. See how, how things go in the coming days on this.